that's right. Oh, okay. That was, uh, that was, uh, the, yeah, that was nice. But should we try it again? I, I had a bunch of fart notes on the melody. Yeah. It was, like, like it was almost wrong. there. Like, after his first solo, like, one of the chords left, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I thought it was, like, pretty awesome. Yeah, that was nice for the first Ooh, try. Not bad for the first take. <laughs> yeah, that was not bad at all. So, Joe Hisaishi from kind Spirited of, Way, but kind of a sort of. Kind of a sort of the the sixth station was so, the name of the piece. Yeah, talk about what you guys um, did. The idea behind it. Yeah, yeah. Ba basing it off of that and then working around that. Yeah, so the way we constructed it was uh, the beginning was kind of like the original piece, right? And then there's a weird mid part that we're like i don't think we can do that on ukulele so we'll just keep that out we'll replace it with a different bridge and then we'll come up with our own like passage like the b and c part where uh the b was kind of like uh the original melody of the a part and then the c part was like something we just kind of threw in to be able to put in like a melodic solo that Kelly yeah. was doing and then we came back around to the the regular melody and basically ended with that you know you do you you always do these like really beautiful voicings the uh, weird boogeyman voices yeah <laughs> why don't you show it talk about some of these chords that you're playing there and how do you come upon them are you just moving your hands around looking for things or is yeah this... basically so we have this uh you know we try to make it sound without I'm trying to make the least racist sounding uh, explanation, but make it sound as Asian as possible. And a lot of it is with the the open, um, you know, chording or mm -hmm. open voicings like that. Or yeah, that. like the minor ninths, minor ninths, a lot of uh, suspended ninths. Yeah, because so, like the more open notes you have or open strings you have in the chord the better it sounds and that kind of represents like how they write the music especially right. for these movies yep so uh the approach i i like to do as well is especially playing with low g is treating the low g as as like a a bass string of a of a guitar where that's where a lot of the movement is going to happen right so you have the that one chord we did it's just an open what is this, a, a nine seven zero zero, mm -hmm. and then we're just walking down to a seven seven zero zero to a five seven zero, which would be an E minor, a D, D C, a C a B and minor. then the B minor. So that chord, right? Yeah. Or the that's that's a this is like four, a B two, minor seven zero. zero. Yeah, or and then, four two two zero. And our chord choices like are very different from how we, I guess, structured it in the beginning. Because all we were doing was just shout, uh, shouting out like basic chords, like E minor. Yeah, so we and then the structure, D, right, right, right. And then C, and then B minor. But then we chose to kind of like switch it up and play more of like an E minor nine. To yeah, get more yeah, mis yeah. Mysterious sound. And, and then, that's uh, like the kind of sound that uh, Joe Hisaishi. Yeah captures in his he, he does a lot of the dissonant a notes of, right there's that you know that's why i like doing this kind of chord mm. that's a nine six three zero and then walk down from there nice and i was kind of like switching over from like playing a like more of an open e minor seven to like a yeah, to, more of like a pile power chord, but then, to like a a D suspended nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but for, to more to give more of like a neutral. Chord yeah, because right? I yeah. I don't want to like play any of like the same notes in the same places. You so I was like, okay, since you're gonna be playing up here, I should have as much open strings as possible. Yeah, I, that know. was yeah, that was perfect. That was like the piano voicings that you were saying that you yeah. Even though we were playing, I am holding a C major seven instead of a C. Most of the time, I was only playing these. 
yeah. because um, it adds more body because yeah. the more trouble sounds you have because you're playing up here. Yeah. You know, like just having these three strings. Yeah. You know, I, I would kind of add the A at like the ba, 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 like the downbeat. Yeah, know? yeah. So you play the chords like you were doing. B7 like this is good for beginners because they can go back to the one. It's the yeah, same yeah. shape but just moving everything down one string. Yeah. Yeah. So but that we're... was <laughs> oh, kind of so the ideas I just behind realized, it. Uh, auto focus on you. <laughs> Your camera wasn't on, so I don't even know if like oh. uh, how out of focus that first part was, but. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> just close your eyes. There's, 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 there's always like one aspect that I disappoint myself with the <laughs> video recording or whatever. But you know, um, that sort of like Ghibli sound is it translates so well to ukulele, but it's like it's not um, the typical like chords and things that you're gonna really learn. Maybe. Yeah, you have to kind of MacGyver it in a way. Yeah, and you got to be like very, you have to expose yourself to that kind of style of music to understand how it feels and the flow goes. Because then, yeah, yeah, those aren't like typical chords you're gonna ever really play unless you're in that. And there's parts where we're not playing like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. We're kind of like, yeah, you know, we'll come in like a little slow, late. That's but it's the, the emotion it it carries through better. Yeah, it does. Because then that's that's more of the main focus instead of like the chords that you're playing. It's like, ah, uh, if you want to capture that, the you know what Joey says she is portraying in his pieces and mm. his feel and stuff. It's like you gotta not worry about the. You gotta have a yeah. little more freedom. Yeah, in the metronome. Yeah, like that that voice goes nice. Yeah. That's like nice. you always you usually use that instead of the yeah but then you just say yeah that main part where you're finger picking try to show those chords uh like the no 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 later on like towards the end oh yeah so that is the that that's the first chord the so you have uh, what would this be? Uh, this is the Tommy Emmanuel chord. <laughs> that uh, it's zero six three five, and that's like in place of the E minor, right? Like Kalei will be playing that. Oh yeah, uh, that's the E minor nine. E minor nine. Because you have the F sharp in there. Okay, yeah, E minor nine, the Emmanuel nine. But then you also have a a seventh in there. A e minor. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the E nine, E minor nine. That's the first chord, and then the finger picking was. Um, there's in the original piece. There is that kind of like. Or. Kind of like movement. We kind of threw that together based on that but it's not like the original one but it, the finger picking is um you're alternating between these two the dissonant notes right and then you're adding in the as you're as you're picking that so it goes that that one is a hard one because 
uh, transitioning between those two fingerings, you have to go. Which I couldn't do. I kind of faked it. Um, So it's really just walking down on the bass after that first chord. I don't want to find a better fingering for it because it's like really hard. If it's hard for Corey, good luck, guys. <laughs> Some of you guys can pull it out. Uh, if it's hard for Corey, don't ask me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are you what are you doing behind that? Play? So I'm actually focusing the chords a lot on the uh, the top three strings or. I guess you could say the second, third, and fourth strings. And um, I'm holding like an E minor seven shape over here. And then I'll go to a, what was like a D sus. And then I would go to a, I'm actually holding all the chords, but only playing mostly the top three strings of the ukulele. So, what I'm trying to make sure is that Corey has full range of all of the notes that are up here and making sure nothing clashes. So I'm doing, there's two things that I alternate on um, during this part. Um, first, I'll do something that involves just the three strings. So, so I'm doing, um, I'm plucking the top and following up with the two middle strings. So you get this. And then I'll take I'll go from the top three to the bottom three and that gives it a totally different sound so fingers are still plucking only the bottom strings but my thumb is alternating between the G and C so it goes uh. that's nice you like build into that though by doing that first yeah. just the bottom three then alternating in the I try to find out like how can you get the most sounds out of the same thing and it, a lot of it has to do with just doubling the, up on stuff doubling right? up on stuff uh, focusing the most of the chord on one side of the ukulele, top or bottom. Yeah, and alternating that pattern, it gives off different colors. And yeah, it's, it has a lot to do with like listening to piano music. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of this, like the left hand doing. That. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> you know, or left hand just doing like the, the the bass over here, and then you have the the right hand playing all of like the. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. you're like. <laughs> like a 6 8 kind of so it's basically uh, like a long while it's like one two three four five six one two three four five six but the accent is only on the one 
Was the original song like that? No, no. It wasn't even... It's not even fast. <laughs> it, just... it just goes... Right. Isn't it in four? Yeah. Yeah. Regular. So we're like, how do we kind of transform it to where it's more alive? Because on a piano, it's unfair when you have the sustain pedal when you oh. just... In full range. <laughs> <laughs> like, this will die out a lot quicker than the piano chords, right? They'll just... For sure. Ring yeah. forever. And if you listen to that piece, it's like one of the one of my favorite pieces from Spirited Away. And it matches really well with the scene in that movie where they're on the you know, they're at the sixth station and they're going into um they're moving away from the main where the movie takes place in that the bathhouse right. I have to rewatch to it. the But yeah, it takes place mostly in the bathhouse. And then um, they're escaping to Yubaba's sister's house or whatever. To, um, I forget exactly. I, I haven't really seen it, but I can't imagine the movie being as good as the soundtrack. I really like the soundtrack more yeah, than, yeah. than really all the movies. The movies are great, but the, the movie, uh, the music. Music makes the... Yeah. I remember uh, when that movie was... It, it came out in theaters, too. Yeah, it was in, like, 2001 or something. And then it came out in theaters again. Yeah. Like, they did a re-release. Like, you could watch, like, spend a whole day watching all Jalee stuff. There's another piece <laughs> that I always wanted to try that's, like, super hard. I'll just play... It's not a very long piece, but... Um, I think maybe one day we can tackle it. Clay, like... When you go into soloing on something like that, um, are you thinking just like a key or, I mean, what's your thought process? Well, I brought, so the one thing that I want to, I always like focus on first is having a crescendo in the solo. Like not, not really like where, what note do I start? It depends on the dynamic on where I'm actually going to start playing. And um, a lot of times I'll play something that's like using the chords and then slowly you start adding more and more picking. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do stuff like. to like a like introducing yourself when you're soloing and then from there or start off like a good way to start off a solo and be safe is actually start off from a note that's within the chord that's currently being played so if i'm playing e minor i have you know e g and b so i'll start from one of those notes and then connect them to each other so i'll do stuff like up here so there's a b there's an e and then there's a G up here. But I don't just want to play the three notes. I'll add the the step that's in the scale to connect it. So, you know, but really, you're just playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then what I like to do, too, is um, if I want more of a warmer sound, I'll change my soloing to the E string. Because the E is usually always warmer than the A, so then you get stuff like yeah, you get a thicker sound, yeah. you know. And because I've been so influenced by a lot of orchestrated music, a lot of Celtic stuff and piano pieces, um, I tend to think melodies like that. So I'll hear stuff in my head. Okay, I'll, all right, this would be a good part to add some strings. So I'd be like, okay, what would strings sound in ukulele? Oh. Because when you're listening to a cello, they're going, you know, and then um, there's so much other things that you can actually do. But what's going on in my head is all I'm trying to do is bring the most out of what is currently being played in the rhythm section, and making sure that every single note corresponds in a way where it not only makes musical sense, but it's it, it's it makes me feel good. So usually when you're soloing, it's good to play um, for other people. But really, you want to make sure that you're having the best time of your life when it's your time to shine. 
And I never really tried to shine. I tried to make the music shine. And you have to be very sensitive. You have to know all your chords. You have to be aware of what is going on dynamically, uh, musically, and trying not to clash. So there's a whole lot of multitasking that's going on. But the first step to get into soloing is learn your scales. Scales. <laughs> Because what you can start from any one of those notes and slide into anything that's within the chord that's being played. Yeah. And it'll you, sound great. You got to know what, where you're going, right? Yeah. You have to know where you're going. You have to know where all the notes are on every single string. There's no shortcut to yeah. that. Yeah, like knowing <laughs> that you're on your G and you're on your E, like yeah. all the way up the fretboard, knowing all those individual notes. Mm -hmm. To me, I think like each string is like a different feeling or emotion for me. Like uh, the A string is very bright. It's like... Um, it cuts through, you know, and it has a little bit of punch where the E has a lot more warmth and it's more gentle. Then you have the C, which is like extremely fat and warm, which normally I play a high G and that kind of acts as my bass string. But in this case, we're, I'm playing with a low G and that adds a totally different dimension to everything too. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot for people to think about. So, well, I want to show you that it's probably gonna, uh, I don't know, trigger a copyright thing, but just to like hear, uh, this is like, I'm like real quick, even monetize these. So. Oh, okay. But this is one of the, this is like one of the under, underrated pieces from the movie. It's the dragon boy. There's a part where the dragon comes out, uh, Haku or whatever. Is it? Oh, the yeah, yeah. From Spirit Away. Yeah. And then. There's like that exciting part with flying around and whatever. He's like the most mind-blowing composer, right? Yeah. And that's like one piece that's like not similar to like any of the other ones in the in the whole movie. I'm like, holy crap. I heard it by itself and I was like, wow. How the hell do, how do you write that? <laughs> <laughs> Could you This imagine playing with that whole orchestra behind you? Yeah, for real. It must feel so good to be in that band. I'd love to play for... Hans Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my uh, favorite composer. <laughs> he did uh, The Last Samurai. Yeah, he did a bunch of movies. He yeah. did, uh, he's more famous, known for like Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, oh, and, a lot of and, them. Um, a lot of the movie the, soundtracks. Was it, was it Inter Interstellar or was it... Um... It was Hans Zimmerman, yeah. Tell us in the comments who your favorite modern day composer is. Like my favorite song from him is like eight minutes long. <laughs> it's like eight or ten minutes long. What was it from? It's from Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe we can do Pirates of the Caribbean. Too. It's called I Don't Think Now is the Best Time. <laughs> it's the Sounds longest like a, title ever. Like a jazz But then it has standard. every single emotion you could cram into one piece. Everything. Sounds like something I'd tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think now is the best time. I tell myself all that. And that's, that's what I'm time. sitting in traffic and I'm like, oh, I gotta take a crap. Now is not the now is not the best time. So the instrument that Corey has, it's kind of interesting. It was the very last of the 25 year anniversaries that were built in 2020, and Charlie had built this for a customer who ended up having some, you know, I mean covid related financial issues so he held on to it because he still wanted it but four years later had to pass so one of you guys is going to be very lucky and this cuban mahogany which he got from bart potter 15 plus years ago i think is the same incredible cut of wood that Corey had on a kolau <laughs> of his i wonder if uh probably the same log yeah it probably it, and it's like the most fiddle back awesome cuban i mean just the coloring and figure on it was like i mean you just can't find this stuff it's just not out there yeah, yeah no wonder it felt familiar <laughs> <laughs> i missed that you yeah well if chris is watching he has that ukulele now so He's probably Enjoy watching. <laughs> He's watching. <laughs> But give us a sample review. Yeah. 
This is the 1879 series, which is uh, which showcases a lot of the like original ukulele builds with the you know the rope purfling, um, along with a lot of additions that Charlie had put on, which are extremely beautiful, especially the rosette with the uh, coat of arms, the Hawaiian um, part of the Hawaiian flag and. Um, royalty and stuff um, but yeah you have that with the beautiful Cuban mahogany top back and sides um, a nice side port and you got the herringbone back strip here really nice uh, strap button here with the end graph as, as well in herringbone um, I like this uh, layout with the fret dots it's really only the Roman numerals here up on the 12th fret. You got the side dots, um, but the only thing occupying the fretboard is that, the 25 um, in, in Roman numerals. Um, Ebony Bridge fretboard on the faceplate. You got a completely different, well, the headstock shape too is um, different on these. Very, very nice. Uh, Face plate, you have the Hawaiian coat of arms um, kind of emblem there, which is very well done. Uh, Charlie, of course, does perfect work, and every bit of this ukulele is amazing. Uh, Goto tuners, and these are this is the Tomastic Infill Low G string with. Um, fluorocarbon for the rest of the treble string so this is really nice so cube mahogany is not like regular mahogany it's higher in density it's very similar to uh, even a rosewood kind of density so you get a lot more response especially in the low end along with that mellow mahogany sound So check it out. Hopefully this isn't the last one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it is, is definitely the last. Of I hope the, it, I'm just hoping you um, like. Ah, oh, changed my mind. I have another one. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> but yeah, I'll take ten of them. I'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it on my credit card. That's already kind of maxed out. So. Uh, Kind of a fart note somewhere, but yeah, holy moly, this uke. When uh, we were doing that that dissonant note thing back and forth, like in my ears, I'm like, whoa. Yeah, I, I can hear it. It's it's like it pops, and it it has this ringing, like glowing tone. Mm -hmm. Sounds like 
someone's like shaking a note like super fast it's like fluttering almost you know earlier you were talking about like this doesn't sustain like a piano and you hold a note and it's just kept sustaining i'm like it's kind of sustaining like almost like a piano (laughs) it's not a five minute sustain but it's you know a minute minute or two you know (laughs) 30 seconds which who needs it to sustain for that (laughs) yeah that's Chris, can you buy this one too? <laughs> so Charlie's kind of entered a semi-retirement. He's building about half of what he used to. And um, he was telling me recently that he just kind of wasn't feeling inspired for a little bit. So he just decided to take a little bit of time off and then came back to it, really feeling it. Yeah. I was like, gosh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> but, but no, I mean like... It's nice that he's uh, he puts his heart into these instruments, and you know it really shows. So Calais got, I got the Koa sister. <laughs> yeah, classic three hole. Classic three hole, or more like signature. <laughs> yeah, right. Three sound hole. Can you demonstrate how to hold it? Like you do the. <laughs> <laughs> I almost it feels wrong like picking it up like this. Bowling like, ball. <laughs> but it kind of no, but it's comfortable. It's really yeah, like, comfortable. I feel like you know? that's a secret feature. So you hold the EEVs when you're, you know, you're just on the side, on stage. <laughs> this seems wrong. <laughs> it's too expensive to do that. I, know, it's like, I feel like a, I don't, I don't know. I probably would grab it the wrong way, and <laughs> I don't know something would go wrong. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, Master Grade Koa from Charles, and this is beautiful. I mean, he sent us a couple of these uh, with with the same or similar features. But I, I like the the color, the tone of this Koa, like the color tone. It's really nice. Because usually when you get Koa, it's like it it kind of like leans more on the lighter or super dark but this is kind of like in that middle ca- caramel yeah range the the curl is curl really is nice. super tight you like guys notice around. something different about this one it's subtle than the ones we've gotten in before uh hmm. is the sound hole diameter <laughs> oh, point one inch. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> no, there, there's not it's larger. There's not usually that purfling going around the headstock in in behind. Oh, that's that's right. <laughs> I want to see it. Oh, that's cool. It's like a little added detail that um, you don't see very often on on this style that he builds. Were there always purfling lines on the fretboard? Yeah, there is on the fretboard too. On this one. Hmm, that's nice. I'm gonna. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> he said he didn't know if he was gonna keep doing that because it's kind of a lot more work and it's, it's like so small. Something and thin. people will hardly notice. Like people, like don't they don't know like how hard it is to drop like well, it's just a piece time, that yeah. tiny yeah. and thin. You know, so you got perfling around the whole body, uh, all all three sound holes the fretboard and the headstock and sort of normal fret markers we have more of a polynesian inspired design you got these shark teeth or triangles on the third fifth seven ten twelve and fifteenth and if you prefer normal um, fret dots well we have them on the side so not only is this ukulele does it have fret dots on the top side, but it also has it on the opposite too. What? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, this is what's crazy about this. So I thank you for making this because we get so much requests from our customers that want us to restring it left hand, but all the side dots are on, on the bottom when we do that. So this is perfect. This is like a universal right left hand ukulele. I mean, I mean, every every other ukulele is discriminating. 
Wow. And this is cool. When you hold it this way, the you get the sound holes in different positions. But yet, you can see your, where you should be if you don't want to look over. Okay, give us a left-handed sound sample. <laughs> One of these days, I will do it. <laughs> One of these days, I will. But I have my nails on my right hand are too long. <laughs> so... Oh gosh, it's like starting from square one all over again. So if you guys ever wanted to see me struggle, there you go. <laughs> We're all beginners in some way or another. But it's even harder because like you have to think inverted. Yeah. And then the coordination from like going from right hand, even though I'm a, I'm a left-handed person, like I do everything. With, oh, with this is this what a trip. playing ukulele and kicking a ball is all right hand for me. It's funny, like I'm trying to do chords on my right hand, and I'm like, why aren't they moving? Because I'm thinking and I'm doing chords on my left hand. I'm like, <laughs> like this hand is moving and it should be this. <laughs> 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 What is going on? All right, anyways. <laughs> that has a nice glow to it. Okay, let's see. All right, here's the sound sample. always sound like they've been played for at least a couple of years you know yeah it's like they've become pre-aged yeah yeah <laughs> yep. it's got that rich warmth all right so next we have a, a new budget brand named petros <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
didn't screw up as bad as the last time on the chords. <laughs> but nobody, I don't think anybody would probably notice. Because you didn't stop. As long as you don't stop, nobody's going to notice. Yeah. And then you found your way back on, and I was like, oh, okay, this sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so focused on the melody on that part of the sound. I'm like, what are the chords? <laughs> well, to your credit, you did say you were going to screw up. <laughs> Said I was going to try not to. So it's Waltz Night. Um, is that Joe Hisaishi too? Yeah, pretty sure. This podcast was sponsored by Joe Hisaishi. Yeah. <laughs> Please watch uh, our videos. Well, we already <laughs> we already played one of his uh, songs here, so if there is any money that's given, it would go to him. I mean, we'd be, rightfully so. We, we would love to meet you and play these pieces for you live. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be amazing. <sighs> Try not to screw up. Oh, oh I, I would I would definitely screw up if I. <laughs> he was sitting here right here and just watching, you know, with his. His arms folded well, like this. You have to play with him when he plays like... piano. <laughs> with his piano. He oh, no! Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to forget that I'm playing and just listen. There's such a silky smoothness to Petro's sound. Yeah. These are a little more powerful in uh, tonal response than some that we had before. It's really nice. Go first, Corey. Right. This is number 157 featuring beautiful Redwood on top. Malaysian ebony back and sides. And it has all the, uh, you know, the Petros designs for the purfling, uh, rosette, um, koa binding top and back, side port, also with binding for the sound hole um engraph has the really nice design um you got the brass uh, strap button here with that inlaid into it very nice design on the back strip you got that going down as well fully decked out as always uh ebony bridge fretboard um on the bridge cover it is also bone with that beautiful kind of vine design. Um, bone nut and saddle on the fret dots as well. You got three, five, seven, ten, twelve, fifteen. Um, Koa binding for the fretboard, both sides, all the way up to the headstock. Uh, really nice fret dots as well. Mother of pearl. <laughs> Smooth wound low G with uh, fluorocarbon trebles. Man. Um, up on the faceplate, you got the uh, Malaysian ebony for the faceplate. And then the Petros logo with the classic Rubner tuners. Surprised at how easy it is to tune with these. There's really... Uh, it's like a low friction kind of tuner. So when you're tuning, it's like really smooth, really easy. Name of the purfling and the um, backstrokes. It's, it's uh, Duende. So yeah. Anyways, uh, Petros number one fifty seven with Malaysian ebony back and sides, redwood top. Check it out. Thank you. 
That's why I love Ebony and... Action on here um, is really low, but still super punchy and loud. <laughs> yeah, it's actually like if you raise the action a little bit, you'll get more punch out of it. But if if you like super butter action, it's quite nice. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'll try to be quiet on the side here. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> it's like, oh, you got a nice ukulele in your hand. So I got Petro's tenor number 155. And if you liked how the uh, intro song to these Petro's sounded, you really love playing this ukulele. It... Mm -hmm has a very nice warmth so much sustained depth tone low action but high volume <laughs> you know um let's get into the woods used for this construction and all of the the awesome feature so for the faceplate fingerboard bridge back and sides um and i almost thought that it was almost the tunnel 13 just by looking at how much um, lines and grains there are um, super tight grains on this this top and it it's probably the reason why it, it has such a amazing sound um, high quality wood with an amazing build creates an awesome and unique instrument we have a few um, maori inspired designs you have the maori spears going around for, as the purfling you also have the Maori spears going around the rosette, also complemented with Pawa abalone shell. You know, we have coal binding for the top and bottom. And according to the spec sheet, it says, yes, side port bound with coal <laughs> as well. That's uh, funny. And then you got the uh, Maori spearhead fling on the back and one thing that i love about all of the petros ukuleles is that they all come with a really nice strap button and you can see that it has a picture of a honu which is also featured on the fretboard for the fret markers side dots inlaid in mother of pearl a vintage style rubner tuners and um, I keep saying this, but like I really love Rubner tuners. Um, probably my, some of my favorites up there with Gilbert and, and Goto. Um, I would love to have an ukulele with these tuners on. They're super smooth. So much sound. <laughs>
You know what's funny is that Corey and I just we both played the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I was just like I was three songs. In I was row. like, oh, how can I like make this sound kind of different but kind of not <laughs> same but different same same but diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, inside jokes. <clears throat> it's such a perfect balance of tone. It is. It's such a. I mean, like you said. I mean, I don't know. How to say it in a better way. I mean, like it's spectacular. Gives you yeah, all but perfect yeah. is like even yeah, better. right. <laughs> it's like that's the pinnacle. It's like no flaws. Yeah, you know. The bass and the fullness is there, but the clarity doesn't suffer from it. It's really quite perfect. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the the only reason why I can see like someone not wanting a youth like this is because they might just want something a little bit more simple. You know, it's like without all the inlays. Right. But other than that, like, come on. <laughs> Just lying to yourself. You want it. No. <laughs> well, I, Just my two cents from my experience. Madagascar Rosewood is every, especially a good cut of it. It's it's every bit as good and oftentimes better than Brazilian Rosewood. Very, very similar in tonal character. Um, but... Yeah, some of the best ukes I've played had Madagascar Rosewood. Nice. And yeah, that one sounds amazing. I mean, just look how like how much grain and straight it is. You don't really see that. Usually on Rosewood, it's kind of like a little bit more wavy, but it's, yeah, it's pretty sick. There's also a concert from Petros. I'm going to play. Oh. That one is insane, too. Was that the one I was playing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how how oh. punchy that nuke is, huh? It doesn't, like... Yeah, like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like one. If you look All away... The up on the... Yeah, there's so much tone. It's like... Like normally on a concert, it's it's gone already. It's yeah. Like... Not only that, but there's like no harshness. It's like still full and warm sounding all the way up there. It's super warm, and and normally like a concert would sound naturally brighter, right? Because of the smaller bodies. I don't think so. <laughs> Not in this case. I mean, it, it would to me. I think this is probably what that you could sound like with a high G in, in a way. You know that thing I was showing you guys last week, the Hecklinger gauge that I use to gauge top oh, yeah. thicknesses and bracing and stuff like that. I'm gonna have to do a little studying on these. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what is this magic? You want me to talk about this one? Yeah. Okay. So I got the uh, Petros Malaysian Concert Ukulele number 156. And this is pretty unique because um, normally when people use ebony for an ukulele, they pretty much use the same thing for the bridge, faceplate, fingerboard, top, back, and, or back and sides. Um, in this case, we have three different types of ebony. So let's take it from... For the the back and sides, it, it features Malaysian ebony and it's quarter song, as you can see. And I don't think I've ever seen Malaysian ebony before. I probably, if, at first glance at this, I might not, most likely not have guessed that it's ebony. Um, I don't even want to even share what I probably would have thought. It would have been way off. <laughs> A Zircote, but not, it's a uh, Malaysian ebony, and um, I really like the hibiscus flower um, theme going on with this. It's not only on the back strip here, you have it on the end graph with the strap button. We have coal binding for the top, 
and bottom all around the ukulele and the hibiscus theme continues on um, as the purfling the rosette the rosette also features um, Paula abalone shell and um, for the bridge uh, we have uh, Macassar Ebony and we all know Macassar Ebony we played a bunch of, of instruments made from that it's an awesome and amazing sounding wood but then the fingerboard is made with Indian ebony. So you have Malaysian ebony for the back and sides, um, Macassar ebony for the bridge, and Indian ebony for the fretboard. It's pretty crazy. And I would like to understand the reason why using three different types of ebony. And my guess is because every species of woods looks slightly different from each other and i'm guessing that's just the way the the type of look that he wanted um, on this particular instrument and i love it it, it sounds huge <laughs> there's no loss in tone and pretty much sustain <laughs> And uh, the master, the koa that's used for the binding is master grade. So it's used for the body, fretboard, head plate, heel cap, and the side board as well. Oh, I'm sorry. The binding and the rosette is lay. It's like a lay um, theme. <clears throat> And of course, we got Rubner tuners. sounds like a 10. I know, I was like, I almost did, but then I was like, oh, I might like offshoot where <laughs> my hand is. <laughs> you guys want to play a little ditty on these two?
All right. <clears throat> that was a nice, uh, nice chord progression. I love, love doing that. That, uh, what is it? You mean the, like the, that, uh, the waltzy that, feel? Yeah. It's always a... What is your finger pattern with that? Uh, it's like... Four, three, two, three, two, three, one, three, two, three. <laughs> the typical stuff, right? Like, uh, it's like alternating between the bass and then the treble while this is in between. It's not always that. Sometimes it's like... It depends on where the movement is going. Yeah, and you kind of mix but those, Travis those picking in there too. Two middle strings just kind of pedal through it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love, like, especially with low G, the sound of that, like, the key of F in general. Yeah. F, the B flat, mm -hmm. C7, like... There's something with the just... Yeah. Because you get that, that one C7 over here. Yeah, you can go up to the A minor. Yeah. Okay, so it's hard for any brand to follow Petros, but it's been my goal over the past few years to try to bring something to market that has the elements of custom instruments but more affordable for you guys so we're going to close out tonight with a couple of our newest brand Oli Ukulele thank you oh, I think I restrung this one yeah <laughs> is just throttling my soul. It's <laughs> just throttling my chest in a pleasant way.
would be D minor first, right? Yeah. Right. Um. through all 12 <laughs> these things. <laughs>
think I, I think we triggered a bunch of people. <laughs> They're probably like, <laughs> "Oh no, no, you don't play that song like that." <laughs> you know, because and then you ended on a major. How dare you? <laughs> Because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> we should have ended on a diminished. <laughs> if you wanted to, like, irritate him. Like, it's like. <laughs> or, or one of these scores. Like... <laughs> Ooh. I think he might enjoy that. Alright, go first, Clay. So this is the Oli L2 tenor um, cedar rosewood ukulele. This features a cedar top with Indian rosewood back and sides, um, ebony appointments for the bridge fingerboard and faceplate. And these all come with side ports, radius fretboards, um, really nice like little subtle things like the purfling that goes around here. The rosette up and up the fingerboard and around the headstock. Uh, very beautiful. We got the signature unique um, fret markers for Oli, which comes from the side and goes up and slightly over the fretboard, as you can see here. And I'm not, I don't know if I mentioned the side part. You got top and bottom um, binding, um, armrests for long uh, periods of playing without getting your forearm, you know, irritated or um, you won't have to worry about marks or anything like that. It's super comfortable. And yeah, this is a, a really, really nice ukulele. We've featured this one um, on the podcast and sound samples with Strung Up with the Low G. Uh, this is the first time we're doing it with the High G. This is the Ko'olau Aho High G set. These normally come strung up with the Aho smooth wound fourth. But as you can see, high G works just fine on these. It rings, <laughs> especially when this part. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> it popped out. Like as you're playing and picking and whatever, like you can hear the 
soundboard, which doesn't... yeah, the soundboard like, is like great. It's, it's basically doing this. Like as you're plucking, you can hear like this crazy thumpiness. I guess it's like the the type of like lattice bracing that's used. It allows for all the sound to just jump out. Just... I wish I didn't. I wish this wasn't my line. So I could praise them, but it feels kind of like doing that for your own stuff is like, it's not really, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's kind it's of a, weird. If it's great, then it's great. Hey, thanks, man. Tell us what you got. I got the L2 TSR and a gloss finish. That is the Tenor Spruce Rosewood. And I uh, like the color a lot of the rosewood. We've been getting a bunch of ponos and... um. Olies and yeah, with this kind of rose with this coloring, this reddish, there's some greenish, grayish uh, tones in her, but this uh, brown mixed with the orange reddish uh, coloring is really nice, and that paired with the spruce top. I mean, tried and tested this wood combination. Yeah, I actually prefer the look of Indonesian rosewood to Indian. I mean, it just gives you like a little bit more mm-hmm. Yeah. on the color palette. I have this other one that uh, I saw that was like, whoa. I wish they had more of them, but it's probably a rare cut of that that set of wood, but they got some crazy stuff. Like when we were at the factory, we they are showing us some of the rosewood. I was like, that's rosewood? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, um, <laughs> yeah. Like I have some, uh, some redwood tops that I'm gonna pair up o- when I'm over there in a few weeks with um with the koa. No, no, with um Maple. some of some of their rosewood that has the sap in it. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna nice. Holy crap. hand select some stuff over there. I've been buying woods lately, <laughs> but you know this combination right here you can't can't be. I mean, this is why. Most classical guitars, and uh, yeah, throughout the years, this has been the magic combo. Yep. And this uh, feels very much like a guitar with uh, all the low end that gets produced. It's such a I keep forgetting it's it's a regular ukulele. Is that blowing out the? <laughs> I, I I really think that um, Oli is a good match for your line. It's the perfect name because it's like Oli for holy here moly is more of a chant that tells a story. Yeah. And it, and it's not something you do soft. You have to have a big voice to be able to do a, a real Oli. And these have massive voices. And I think an instrument will tell a story, especially if, depending on where you are. Everybody puts their own, you know, um, personality into it. And especially the people behind the factory that are building these, there is a story attached to each and every single one of these. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're beautiful people. So... The Oli without the Okina is the, the chant, and then with the Okina means joy or happiness. But yeah, either either one you oh, go yeah. with, you know, it, 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 that's interesting. It's almost like telling everybody about joy and happiness, I guess, you yeah, know, yeah, when, yeah. You really, when it really comes down to it. I mean, that's what I feel when uh, I play one of these. That's how I feel when I sell one of them, too. <laughs> yeah, they've been moving up at the store. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's crazy because we have them stacked up right next to, you know, all of our top brands that we've been selling for years. And how I sell them is just putting it in the customer's hands and having them try it out and explaining to them why it sounds that way. And then they're like, whoa. And then they're asked, oh, how much is this? Like, tell them the price of like. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, I'm 
getting a lot of questions and and stuff through emails and i'm like oh, i wish i could just put it in your hands <laughs> yeah it's like just, just it's it's a new brand you know just try but, it you're gonna enjoy it you might want to get rid of your other ukes <laughs> nah. this, this is like the the icing on the cake for some people <laughs> Yeah, holy moly. Holy moly. Holy holy. <laughs> holy holy. Um, yeah, sorry. So, Tenor, Spruce, Rosewood, Ebony Bridge, Fretboard, Radius Fretboard, Inch and a Half Nut, uh, Spruce Top, Indonesian, Rosewood Back and Side, Side Port, Ebony Binding, Arm Bevel, uh, Koala Aho Loji set. This thing is massive. And, uh, yeah. Grover tuners. Powerful sound. Jeez. Yeah. Anyways. Let's give it a sound sample. Just tone, tone in my ears. It's like you don't have to play hard either on these. They're so loud and clear though, I'm gonna hear my mistakes even better. <laughs> <laughs> or you're gonna hear our mistakes even better. It's uh, like you guys Bob Ross's mistakes. beautiful, beautiful mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all how you look at it. All right, guys, we love you. Without you, we wouldn't be able to afford to do this wonderful job that we have. And let us know however we can help with anything ukulele. And thank you, guys. Give some love to Corey and Clay in the comments. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Aloha. All right.